Are you trying to conceive and have been told that your egg numbers or quality is not very good? Then this video is for you. Role of intra-ovarian PRP or platelet-rich plasma injection for ovarian rejuvenation. This is a little different from the previous videos that I've posted, especially about laparoscopy, but nonetheless very, very important from a fertility perspective. Now we know that women are born with a finite number of eggs and over the years, they use all these eggs to a point where they lose all their eggs and achieve menopause. As the numbers of eggs decrease over the years, the quality of them also start to go down. With this declining number and quality, there is an increase in the number of irregular cycles, infertility and also miscarriages. Now aging is inevitable for everyone in every little way, but there of course are people like Amitabh Bachchan who even at such an old, old age looks so young and so dynamic. But it is also true, and Amitabh Bachchan here plays the role of a man suffering from progeria, which is premature aging in this moving, movie called Pa. So premature aging is also a reality. Of course, in Pa, in progeria, there are other problems that a person has. But what is true is that while most women will age after a certain particular biological age like 35 or 30 or 40, there are women who suffer from premature aging as well. Now this premature aging can happen because of a variety of reasons. I will be discussing them um, in a few moments. But there are certain races which are more predisposed to premature aging. And this is a very nice study from um, Spain, which shows that ovarian age of Indian women were found to be approximately six years older than their Spanish or Caucasian counterparts. Why is this important? Because there is a huge number of Indian and Asian women now settled in various parts of the world and being looked after by Caucasian doctors. Now, when they go for treatment, unfortunately, some of those doctors may be looking at these Asian women in the same in the same light, in the same eyes as their Caucasian counterparts, which is not correct because Indian and Asian women are going to age biologically faster and they thus will require higher forms of treatment at a lower age. Now, this is again the same kind of study done by someone else wherein they've shown that AMH levels, AMH being the test for ovarian reserve, are found to be lower in Chinese women of all ages as compared to Caucasians of the same age. Now, will they, while this can happen because there is maybe more pollution in the Asian countries, uh, more unregulated food and stuff like that, but what is also true and the study shows that, that there is a certain genetic change in the Asian women which makes them age faster biologically as compared to their Caucasian counterparts. Now, ovarian aging can happen, of course, because of age, but it can happen prematurely because of other reasons like obesity. So if you have a higher BMI, your ovaries are going to age faster. If there is increased amount of stress, smoking is another major reason for ovarian reserve coming down. And it is not just active smoking, but passive smoking as well is going to reduce your fertility. Diseases like endometriosis and PCOS are also going to make you uh, age faster, at least in the ovaries. Fertilizers in the food, I have already said that there is a slow poisoning happening because of pollution and the unregulated fertilizers in our food. And if all this wasn't bad enough, there are something called endocrine disrupting chemicals and forever chemicals, which also cause reduced ovarian um, reserve. So these are chemicals which are present in the nonstick cookware, in the um, plastics that we use, in the lipsticks, in the perfumes, and in all the chemicals around us. There's all slowly leaching into our system and causing various diseases, including premature ovarian aging. Now, because of all this, there is a rise in the, uh, the need for donor eggs uh, around the world. Now, at the beginning part of my career 25 years ago, about 10% of my patients would require donor eggs, and most of these women be, would be above the age of 35. Today, more than 50% or maybe I would say 80% of women in my practice have poor ovarian reserve. At least 50% of them definitely require donor eggs. And majority of these women are 25, 26, and 27 years of age. But 
if we have very successful donor egg programs, then why should we worry about ovarian aging? What is egg donation program? So say woman A has a poor ovarian reserve and she is unable to conceive with her own eggs. She takes the eggs of a woman B who is younger and has a better ovarian reserve and the partner of woman A gives his sperms and which are now fertilized with the eggs of woman B and the embryos which result are now put into the womb of woman A. Thus she conceives in her womb with her own partner's sperms but the eggs are taken from somewhere else. But is that really what everyone wants? Everyone really would want a baby coming from their own biological products, her own eggs. So obviously this is not acceptable to a lot many women, which is why there is an unmet need, a need for an elixir of life, something which is going to rejuvenate the ovaries of these young women who would want a child from their own eggs. So here I want to talk a little about how ovarian aging or how aging in general happens. So mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. Mitochondria is present in every single cell of the body. They're essential for, amongst other things, oocyte maturation, fertilization, and the cleavage of embryos. They produce something called adenosine triphosphate or ATP, which is the energy used in cell division. Now, while the ATP are being generated, Obviously, there is a lot of byproducts which come out, which are called ROS or reactive oxygen species. Now, these are cleared away. These are dirt which come out of this uh, pr production of ATP. Now, these bad things are cleared away by the in-house antioxidants. Now, if the mitochondria does not work well and less ATP is generated, or if this reactive oxygen species are not cleared away by the antioxidants, damages to the DNA start to happen. And this is where aging starts. Now, how do we reverse ovarian aging? There are three pillars of reversing this, if at all it can be reversed, or at least an attempt to reversing. So there is the use of testosterone gel, wherein we say that the use of testosterone gel over two to three months can actually sensitize the ovaries to the already existing hormones and more eggs and better eggs can form. The use of antioxidants also helps and of course the platelet rich plasma can be used which is the main basis of our discussion. There is a lot of talk about antioxidant supplements. Now we know that these reactive oxygen species, how does stress cause problems in our body? Stress doesn't go and directly cause a problem in our body. It goes and creates these reactive oxygen species in our body, which in turn cause the heart problems, the lung problems, and every other kind of problems in our body, including ovarian aging. Now antioxidants are these these fighters that we have in our body or we take them orally as supplements from outside which are going to fight all these bad people in our body which is the ROS. I'm not going to get into this in much of details because this is not the subject of our discussion. What is the subject of our discussion is platelet rich plasma and how it can help. Now PRP has been around for a long time 1970s or maybe even earlier but there's the first documentation from 1970s and it's been used primarily first by the dentists and then in sports physiology. Rafael Nadal and um, Tiger Woods are two celebrities, two sports personalities who've made PRP very famous when they've used it for um, recovering from their sports injuries. What is PRP used for? In gynecology, that's, it could be used for ovarian rejuvenation. In fertility, rather, it's being used for ovarian rejuvenation. And some women who are born uh, or who, for whatever reason, have very poor lining of their womb and are unable to conceive. So for them, we use the PRP therapy. Besides that, it's used for facelift, for if you're having baldness, if you've lost all your hair like me, then you could use PRP to, to reduce uh, some of that hair loss. Uh, Orthopedics are using it. If you've got a bad scar, it can be used. It's being used for cardiac surgery, pediatric surgery, gynecology, as I said, urology, plastic surgery. Uh, eye specialists are using it. I've already said that dermats are using it 
for cosmetic reasons. Here are again two Hollywood uh, celebrities who've used PRP and have made it very, very famous. Kim Kardashian and Angelina Jolie, they used vampire facelift and Dracula facelift. Go back and search for images for these. They're pretty horrifying, but I'm told they work very well. Now, here are various applications of PRP in gynecology. I'm not going to get into all of them, but did you know that PRP can actually be used to improve the orgasms that you have as well? So there you have multiple uses of PRP, but we're going to stick to PRP for ovarian rejuvenation in this video. What is PRP? So PRP or platelet-rich plasma is a biological product wherein we take your blood, but we increase the amount of platelets which are present in that concentrate more than what is present in your normal blood. And because of the increased amount of platelets being present, there are a whole lot of other complementing factors which all come in, which are at a higher level in that concentrate as compared to what they are present in the blood. This could be growth factors, chemokines, cytokines, and other plasma proteins. So when the body first has an injury, platelets come in there and there is a higher aggregation of platelets. These platelets get activated and they release growth factors and cytokines. They attract stem cells. These stem cells are cells which can be transformed into other cells of the body and thus they can actually promote healing, cause new vascularization. So new blood vessels will form in these areas and these blood vessels will bring more growth factors and cause healing of that area. And of course, as I said, they promote healing. These platelets will be re releasing various factors called platelet-derived growth factors, uh, VEGF, FGF, EGF, TGF, complicated names. You don't need to know about them. You just need to know that these are all friendly things which come from the platelets which are going to promote the healing. A nascent primordial egg which is present in the ovary takes about 72 days to mature and become an egg that finally comes out of that ovary, ovulates and may uh, cause a pregnancy. Now, when PRP is given or injected into the ovary, these primordial cells, which were probably otherwise aging, probably defective and incapable of maturing and giving a pregnancy, probably rejuvenate. And that is how reversal of ovarian aging happens because of PRP. Can PRP produce new eggs? Now, we know that women are born with a finite number of eggs and they don't produce any new eggs, but that is old concept. There are some people, some scientists who believe that because of PRP, because of the stem cells that it attracts and it produces, new eggs can actually be produced in the ovary and that is how the um, results of the ovarian reserve testing like AMH and antral follicle count show that numbers have increased after the use of PRP. This is debatable, not believed by everyone, but you never know what future is going to show us. So what are the benefits of injecting a PRP into the ovaries as compared to the oral supplements? Now, some regions may have less platelets or less blood. Thus, if you have less blood supply to the area, less platelets are going to come and the platelets are not going to be able to do their beneficial effect. So if you inject platelets in a concentrated form, they will do much better. So PRP injection leads to release of multiple growth factors and all of them work together. So not just the platelets, a lot of other factors also come in. And of course, being the blood of the woman, same woman, obviously complications are much lesser. There are no reactions happening. Now, before embarking on PRP, what are the things we need to understand? Very careful indication has to be sought. So only if someone has a poor ovarian reserve, which is documented by tests for ovarian reserve testing, should you be going ahead with this procedure. Counseling is very, very important. You must, you must know exactly what to expect out of the injection, not only in terms of the day that the injection is going to happen, but as well as the outcomes of it. Timing, I preferably like to do the intra-ovarian 
injection immediately after the periods before the follicles and the eggs actually start to form that is a nascent ovary it's much easier to inject inside the ovary at that time and i feel the leakage outside of the ovary is much much lesser so i would prefer doing it just immediately after the periods finish maybe in the next five to seven days so here is a small little video of how prp happens we first draw about 15 to 20 ml of blood the volume of blood depends on how much of final prp wish we wish to create this video is an oversimplified version of how the processing actually happens it would have become too long if i had to show the entire processing but it's put into a, a specialized centrifuge machine which kind of churns that blood separates it into various layers from there certain particular layers are removed put into another test tube this is again put back into a centrifuge and these processes keep continuing various kinds of things are done various things are added chemicals are added and finally the injection preparation is ready now this is the needle which is guided over an ultrasound probe the ultrasound probe is inside the vagina the needle guides over it and through the ultrasound we can actually see where exactly to inject into the ovary so you see this fine needle is moving into the ovary and the injection happens so some people are getting very good results with prp and some people are not getting good results with prp that obviously is going to happen because of the techniques which are used for doing the prp what kind of concentrate of prp are you being able to make in your laboratory and of course certain activating factors if they are added make the efficacy of prp much much more so how is prp injected into the ovaries as i've shown you a little earlier through the vagina via an ultrasound probe and needle this is the same ultrasound and the same needle which is used for egg collection now instead of sucking the eggs from the ovary the needle is going into the ovary and injecting into the ovary besides this we can do it via laparoscopy also under direct vision i'm going to be showing both of them to you in a few seconds now this is an ultrasound view you'll see a needle coming in from top yes and this needle is now into the ovaries you'll see a flash see the flash of light is the prp being injected into the ovaries the needle comes out a little and then jabs again in another part of the ovary so as to inject prp in as many areas of the ovary as possible the problem with this kind of a procedure is it's a little blind we don't know where exactly in the ovary we are going and whether the prp is spilling out of the ovary or not one more video of ultrasound guided prp injection so as i was saying we are not very sure whether the prp is staying inside the ovary or not or whether it's spilling out and that probably is also why some of the prp injections don't work very well why maybe failures happen what can we do to make sure that the injection into the ovary is done in a much better way this is yet one more video now this is a laparoscopic way of injecting now you see my left hand is actually holding that white structure is the ovary 
my left hand is actually grabbing the ovary and my right hand is injecting into the ovary you see despite actually holding the ovary how slippery a little fellow can be and how difficult sometimes it is to inject into the ovary so imagine when we are trying to do this through ultrasound guidance it is possible that the needle slips past and we are not able to inject into the ovaries very very well leading to failure so here i've grabbed the ovary now more strongly and the right hand is now injecting uh, into the ovary and in a few seconds you'll see the ovary swelling up becoming double its size with all the prp which has been injected into the ovary can you see now how the ovary is swelling up so we know that all the prp has gone into the ovary and it's definitely going to work much better than when we injected through the ultrasound but obviously laparoscopy is an invasive procedure not everyone likes to get it done you can't do it again and again so the vaginal approach is obviously a much easier and quicker approach now this is the left ovary the needle has gone in and again you'll see the ovary swelling up quite a bit don't worry about the small little amount of bleed which is seen this bleeding stops in absolutely no time at all there you see the ovary swelling up to 2 to 3 times its size with the prp being injected inside is the process painful now whether it is done laparoscopically or whether it is done through the vaginal route do understand that anesthesia is given you will not feel anything at all in fact in the vaginal prp procedure the patient wakes up within 5 to 7 minutes itself and within 1 to 1 and a half hours the patient is going back home in the laparoscopy procedure we normally make it like a day care procedure where the patient goes back after about 6 to 8 hours how long does it take to see results so as i said in an earlier slide the primordial cells the earliest cells take about 72 days to mature so if we are actually targeting those earliest cells in the ovary then we understand it would take about 3 months for the effect of prp to kick in how long does the effect last no one knows that while some studies have said that prp effect might go away after 6 months but if rejuvenation has happened in my mind the rejuvenation should stay for a much longer period of time it should not really be a reversing factor so in my opinion probably it stays for many many months and years any side effects of the procedure not really at all it's a very simple procedure and done in the right hands it has absolutely no side effects is it effective are there guaranteed results absolutely no do understand that intra ovarian prp for ovarian rejuvenation currently is an experimental procedure there are some patients who are deriving brilliant results out of it but there are also some patients who derive absolutely no results out of it we don't know which subgroup of patients will actually benefit which is why the importance of counseling before taking the procedure that do understand we've got our back against the wall we've got a very poor ovarian reserve nothing seems to be working we are hoping for a miracle coming out of prp and that is when prp is being used but if someone is promising you a miracle cure then that person is not telling you the truth so here are some brilliant very recent studies who've said that prp intervention was found to be beneficial in terms of an improvement in ovarian reserve parameters so the tests for ovarian reserve like amh or antral follicle count were seen to be actually increasing and there was improvement in terms of total number of eggs retrieved the fertilization the cleavage uh, embryos the number of good quality embryos and the chances of your cycles being cancelled because of no eggs or bad eggs being formed was much much lesser after prp injection so here um is again another study which says that prp treatment may be considered in women with premature ovarian reserve and this is a study as recent as 2022 coming from the us of course there are some other studies a lot of studies have come from the middle east 
uh, on PRP and most of them have been very, very encouraging. Some studies have even said that women who were menopausal started getting their periods again uh, after PRP injection. But here is one study which says that uh, the injection of PRP is still experimental, giving us a word of caution that don't jump into it, don't promise the world to everyone um, when you do a PRP injection. So to summarize, PRP injection is experimental. It has shown promising results in numerous studies without any short or long-term side effects. So it is, it is very, very safe. Thus, it may be your best option to achieve a pregnancy with your own eggs despite its initial poor quality or numbers. Remember, if you want something that you've never had, you must be willing to do something you've never done. So I think PRP is a wonderful treatment. I'm sure we're going to refine the process much better in times to come. But right now, for the patients that we've done PRP, some of them have conceived naturally itself. Others who've had failed IVFs or were not being able to use their own eggs have brilliantly used their own eggs to achieve the baby and the child of their dreams. Thank you so much for a patient hearing.